نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل عقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر من احلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین و بزدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا علما نافیا رزقا طویبا و عملا متقبلا اللہم الہمنا رشدا و عزنا من شروری انفسنا اللہم ارن الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباعا اللہم ارن الباطل باطلا و رزقنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ آ ڈسکشن فرام ورس نمبر تھرٹی سکس آف سورت النساء وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ مینلی کمپلیٹڈ دا ڈسکشن آف دا ورس بٹ ناؤ کمنگ ٹو دا لاسٹ پارٹ اللہ سبحان تعالیٰ سیز ان اللہ لا یوحب من کان محتال فخورا دیر از نو ڈاؤٹ انڈیڈ Allah does not like those who are arrogant, self-deluding and boastful. In the last part of the verse 36 of Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us of two types of people who will be deprived of Allah's love. La yuhibbu Allah. Allah doesn't love them. They will not be chosen to be among the beloved people of Allah. These are the people who are what? They are the people who are muhtalan, arrogant people, who act and behave in a proud manner, those who boast of and those who show off. In Surah Nahal, verse number 23, اللہ سے اس لا جرم ان اللہ یعلم ما یسرون و ما یعلنون انہ لا یحب المستقبرین Truly, Allah knows Allah knows all that you keep in secret and what you bring into the open and He does not love those who are arrogant. To be the exalted, to be the sovereign, the mighty, are all the attributes of Allah. And He doesn't like, He doesn't want, and He doesn't let anyone share His attributes. The attributes of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Hazrat Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu ta'ala and who narrates in Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La yudkhulu al-jannah. من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر لا يدخل الجنة that the person will not enter into Jannah into the paradise whom anyone anyone who has arrogance like the weight of the seed will not enter the paradise so this is a feeling which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Where he, where he seriously condemns and dislikes for his bondsmen. So what is arrogance? We need to understand what arrogance really is. Hazrat Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim that a person asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we all like to wear lovely clothes and nice shoes and we feel like holding clothes very expensive, nice lash in our hands. Is, is this kibur? That is, the question was, that is the desire to wear expensive and lovely clothes or shoes or to have expensive possessions. Is this kibur? Prophet ﷺ answered, Verily Allah is beautiful and He likes beauty. This is not kibur. So the desire to wear or to possess lovely and wonderful things or expensive things is not kibur. And the Prophet ﷺ then clarified what kibur is. He said, 
Kibur is what? Bathrol Haq. This means refusing to obey or rejecting the truth. And truth of what? The truth of the Quran and the Hadith. Bathrol Haq wa Nas. Ghamtun Nas means looking down upon people. So by the definition of the Prophet ﷺ defining arrogance. Arrogance means what? To refuse or to reject the commandments of Quran and Hadith and to look down upon people. To refuse the commandments of uh, the Allah of Allah and Hadith is in arrogance is that the person thinks that what I do and what I think and the way I behave and what I wear and the way, the way I dress up myself or my family or the customs of my society and my family or my clan, they are right and they are true. And a'uzu billah thumma na'uzu billah min zalik, the commandments of Quran or Hadith are not correct and they are not righteous. So this is the worst form of arrogance. And then looking down upon our fellow beings is arrogance. If we try to relate, the first arrogance which was done in the universe was by Shaitan, Iblis. And what did he do? As we gone, we've already gone through in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the angels to prostrate in front of Hazrat Adam as it is said in Surah Al-Baqarah, wa is qala rabbuka lil malaikati istudu li adama fasajadu illa iblis aba wastakbara wa kana min al-kafirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked all the angels, ordered the angels to prostrate before Adam and all the angels prostrated except other than that. Other than whom? Other than Iblis, Shaitan. He did what? He did Abba. He refused. He refused to accept the order of prostration. And he did what? Was Takbara. He tried to be arrogant. So this, if you try to relate it with the Ahadith which I have narrated, will obviously clarify what arrogance is. What did Shaitan do? Allah said, bow down, Allah said prostrate and he refused to accept and he rejected the orders of Allah. So this was arrogance. And then what did he say? What did he do? He looked down upon Adam. He looked down upon Adam alayhi salam. As Allah asked him, what stopped you from prostrating? He said, Ana min. I'm better than him. And he said, min narin wa min teen. You created me from fire and you created him from clay, from mud, from soil. So I'm better to him. So this was the arrogance of shaitan that he refused to accept the orders of Allah. And he looked up, he looked down upon Hazrat Adam alayhi salam. Now doing this arrogance, Indulging in this behavior, did he get away with it? What happened? Wakana min al kafirin. It was announced. He became one of the disbelievers. He became one of the kafirin. And what happened with him? What was his punishment? Allah said, Fakhruj, you get out. You get out. He was thrown out of the paradise. Maz'umam madhura. He became one of the cursed ones. He is shaitan a rajim. So, we understand what arrogance is and what and what the punishment for those who are arrogant will be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Alaysa Jahannama Maswa Lil Mutakabbirin, isn't the hellfire the most suitable residence for all those who are arrogant? And then the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ clarifies that in hell. What will be the punishment of all those who are proud and all those who are arrogant? It is reported in a Sahih Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that he said that people who will be arrogant will be raised as tiny ants on the day of resurrection and they will be all collected together and then they will be forcibly driven towards Wallace. The companions asked as to what Wallace was. And the Prophet ﷺ informed that it will be it will be a low-lying place or a valley in the hellfire where the blood and the pus and the sweat of the people of the hellfire will trickle and it will collect there. Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli zambin wa tubu laik. Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli zambin wa tubu laik. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. 
Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. And the Prophet Sallallahu says that whoever supplicates to be released from hellfire thrice, then the hell itself will intercede for him. Rabbana srif anna azaba jahannum inna azabaha kana gharama inna hasaad mustakarru wa muqama. And similarly, if we see from stories of the Quran, Firon, Karun, Abu Jahl, they were all they were all arrogant people, and we we clearly know where they all ended up with. You know, arrogance starts as some feelings, and a tiny seed is initially sown in the heart of the person, and slowly and steadily they get. deep rooted these feelings and the heart of the person becomes the heart of a person who is arrogant who's pompous who's proud and slowly and steadily this feeling like the blood blood of the body goes out and is pumped from the body from the heart to the rest of the body this these feelings from the heart they are conveyed to the rest of the body and then the eyes the eyes of that person become become an arrogant person's eyes and the gaze gaze of the person he looks down on his fellow beings and then these feelings are passed on to his feet and his gait his gait becomes the gait of an arrogant proud person allah says in quran wala tamshi fil arzi marha do not walk arrogantly on the earth and in surah surah furqan allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the gate of the servants of allah of ibadur rahman as how yamshuna ala al arzi hauna and then the feelings are passed on to the face and his expressions become the expressions of an arrogant person allah says in the quran wala tusahir hatta kal nas don't turn your don't turn your faces when people are talking to you and then his conversation becomes the conversation of a proud of an arrogant person the conversation which is mainly composed of i me my mine ours and finally the whole body becomes the body of an arrogant a proud person and then he becomes an oppressor he becomes a tyrant he becomes a cruel harsh and hard hearted individual Allahumma la taj'alna minhum Allah may we be not one of them It's not just spring we we need to correct our feelings and our emotions and we need to take out any arrogance if there is How can we save ourselves from arrogance Now the first tip is as what I normally talk about is start self analysis make a very strict self analysis and a self audit ask yourself am i proud of any of my worldly possessions do i ever ever act arrogantly do i talk do i walk do i look do i behave like an arrogant person am i egoistic am i am i getting conceited and self centered am i selfish you know because these are also the feelings which are going to augment the feeling of arrogance so if you identify any of these then accept because acceptance is the behavior of a true believer acceptance of the sins and of the follies is the behavior of a person who's going to be allowed to be entered to jannah allah says in surah al imran people of the paradise will be whom lam yasiru wala ma fa'alu wa hum ya'lamun they do not insist they do not justify they, these are those who do not cover up their follies and their sins knowingly so after acceptance will be regret and repentance and then promise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for his help to take out these these evil feelings from your heart the second thing is then after seeking forgiveness and trying to work for improvement the second thing what i would suggest is remembrance of allah zikr saying alhamdulillah saying subhanallah saying 
Allahu Akbar is all going to purify our hearts from arrogance or a very loved verse of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Subhanallah Walhamdulillah Wa La Ilaha Illallah Wallahu Akbar accepting the attributes of Allah will will free our hearts of any form of arrogance inshallah and then with zikr salah five times salah bowing down prostrating raku sajda in front of Allah will inshallah free our hearts of arrogance and then gratitude to Allah shukr when we remember, remember all the blessings and the bounties which Allah has provided us with, then we'll be grateful to Allah and then we'll stop being arrogant, inshallah. And then the Prophet wasallam in a hadith suggests that anyone who proceeds in salam, his heart will get cleared of kibur. So you see there are people sometimes who just keep on sitting on meeting somebody, on coming across with somebody, they just keep on sitting and waiting that she should be the first to greet me and she should be the first to say salam. Why should I be the first? No, this is arrogance. This is being proud and vain. Be the first one to say salam. And inshallah, our hearts will get cleared of kibur. And then another suggestion, working with your hands, especially working and doing something in which we feel insulted. When there is something around us in which we feel that I will be doing this, me doing this, me wiping the floor, me brushing the shoes of my husband, me cleaning my washroom, then you must do a thing with your hand and do something for which you feel insulted. Inshallah, the soul will definitely get cleared of all forms of arrogance. And then give yourself a reality check. Of all the things which you feel that you're being arrogant on, just think and just ponder how temporary, how short-lived all these things are. Because you know people can be arrogant on so many things. Sometimes people can be arrogant on their money, on their riches, on their bank balances, on their estates, on their properties, on the huge mansions, on the huge lodges they have, or their beauty, or their knowledge, or their degrees, or their qualifications, their family, their caste, their creed, their color, or something. Sometimes this evil shaitan can even make the believers, a true Muslim, a true Mormon, become arrogant about his worships, about his faith, about his ibadah, about his religion. It is the arrogance sometimes develops in the heart about, about the supererogatory worships a person is doing, the salah, the fasts. Salatul Tahajjud. For example, I can I can clearly remember of an incident. Hazrat Abdul Qadir Jilani and his son, they were traveling in a caravan and uh, they got up in the middle of the night. They got up after midnight to offer their Salatul Tahajjud. And the son, he looked at the people who of the caravan who were sleeping and he talked to his father and he said, how unlucky and how deprived these people are. The father immediately checked the son and he said, they happen to be much better than you. They happen to be much better than you because they are sleeping and they are not, they are not behaving arrogant. You, you are up and about. They are much better than you because you are up and you, you are in a state of arrogance. Similarly, I read of a Tabari. I read of a Ta'abai who used to say that I sleep through the night and I get up to offer my Fajr Salah in a state of humbleness. I would prefer than getting up for Tahajjud and staying arrogant the whole day. So this is arrogance. How humble was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He used to wash his clothes with his own hands. He used to sweep the floor. 
he used to fetch water he used to darn his clothes and ever did he ever mind wearing torn clothes darned clothes and he used to repair and sew his own old shoe and similar were the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu when he was the caliph and the muslim army conquered baitul maqdis they requested hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu to come and get the keys and when he left from madina he was he just was accompanied by a slave and they just had one camel to ride and turns were taken and when they reached when they reached the city the vault of the city the condition was that amirul mu'minin was walking on foot and the slave was on the camel and hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala and who was wearing a dress that had 9 to 11 patches on the dress and it was difficult for the people to identify who was who this is humbleness this is this is simplicity and then this passes on in generations hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala and whose descendant his one of his great grandson hazrat umar bin abdul aziz he was a caliph he was a caliph in the umayyad caliphate and in fact the period of hazrat umar bin abdul aziz was considered as the golden period of the umayyad caliphate and there was an occasion that one of his friends who was a scholar had come to see him and they were talking and it got late at night and the lamp went off because the oil finished and the friend who was a scholar he called upon the slave but hazrat umar bin abdul aziz he asked him not to do so because saying that obviously he had worked the whole day and he was tired and he must have had a very hectic day so he wanted him to sleep and then the friend he tried to get up himself and fill up the lamp but hazrat umar bin abdul aziz stopped him saying that he was his guest and he got himself he got up himself and he picked the lamp and he filled it up with with the oil and then lighted it up and put it back and then when he came back he said look you see when i left i was umar bin abdul aziz and when i have come back i'm still umar bin abdul aziz so this is humility allah loves those who are humble and this is what our salah teaches us the ruku in which we bow down the prostration the sajda in which in which we put our nose we just we just keep our forehead on the ground for the sake of allah it teaches us humbleness being humbled to allah being humbled to his fellow beings Allah says in the Quran wahfiz lahuma junah azul min ar-rahma and low down and low down in humbleness your shoulders with mercy in front of your parents and remember remember any person who does not stay humble to Allah will not be able to stay humble in front of his fellow beings Allahumma ja'alni sabura wa ja'alni shukura Allahumma ja'alni sabura wa ja'alni shukura وَجَعَلْنِي فِي عَيْنِي صَغِيرًا وَفِي أَعْيُنِ النَّاسِ كَبِيرًا a beautiful supplication of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which teaches us to ask for gratitude patience and humbleness then in the verse number 37 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says allazina yaquluna وَيَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبُخْلِ وَيَكْتُمُونَ مَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَأَعْتَدْنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابًا مُحِينًا who are miserly who are stingy and enjoin upon others stinginess and conceal what Allah has given them of his bounty and we have prepared for the disbelievers a humiliating punishment now in verse number 37 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing and labeling certain people as disbelievers and is promising them a humiliating punishment 
who is been labeled as the disbeliever and who is been mentioned to be given as a humiliating punishment is a person who is doing what who's just being stingy regarding his spending who's being a miser so in this word allah has condemned the attitude and behavior of miserliness and stinginess prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a believer cannot be a miser so we need to understand what exactly allah means by miserliness it is actually a state when a person has worldly possessions the person is affording the person has riches and wealth and has been blessed by the bounties of allah but despite of all that he does not spend he does not spend on what is permissible allowed halal and in fact it is ordered and it is wanted and it is like to be spent on and he does not despite having the affordability he does not spend on things which he is supposed to spend this is miserliness so this can be in the rights of the fellow beings and it can be in the rights of allah so now i would be talking first about miserliness in the rights of the fellow beings how how can that happen and how can that be we learned in our previous discussions of surah an-nisa that a husband is duty bound and it is obligatory for the husband to provide for the needs of his wife and of his children and of the family now if a man if a husband who can afford but still does not spend on the due needs and the worldly day to day requirements of the family members then he is being what he's being stingy he's being a miser like despite affording he does not feed he does not clothe he does not educate he does not spend on their feeding on their clothing and the education on the health of the family then this is exactly what miserliness is as far as the rights of the fellow beings is concerned we learned that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam informed us that any person when he spends a dinar for the charity in the path of allah or if he spends a dinar for his slave or a dinar which he spends for his wife or for his children and a dinar which he spends for himself prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the best dinar is that which he spends on himself and on his family and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also offered the reward that if a person is feeding even a morsel to his wife or is giving a gift to his wife then this is what this is the best sadaqa for him so if a husband despite his affordability does not spend on all these things then he's he is being a miser similarly spending on your own self that if allah has blessed us with wealth and worldly riches then our condition our attire should be that it should be according to the economic status we have been gifted with allah says and orders in the quran wa amma bi ni'mati rabbika fa haddis and let the bounties of the sustainer speak let the people know about the bounties you've been blessed with i would want to clarify it with an incident in the in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is reported in a true hadith that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came across a man whose clothes were all filthy and his hair were all messed up prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam inquired is he a poor person the companions told him that he was a fluent and he was a wealthy person then listening to this the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said then his condition should speak of his economic status so this is a form of stinginess or miserliness in related to one's own or the people dependent on the person but in the words which is more highlighted actually is 
and the verse which actually pertains to the form of miserliness is miserliness in the rights of Allah and that is actually what is being more strictly condemned what does that mean that a person does not even spend on the obligatory zakat he's supposed to pay despite having the wealth he does not take out the obligatory share of his riches in form of zakat so this is actually being mentioned the punishment of not paying zakat or even the charity in the way of allah despite being despite being affordable and despite having all the money and all the goals and everything so allah now in this ayah as clearly said that they will be they will be among the disbelievers and they will be uh, they have been punished by, uh, promised as azab muhina but what will be exactly the azab muhina is what allah narrates in surah al imran verse number 180 which allah clearly says wala yahsaban allazina yabkhuluna bima atahum allah min fadlihi huwa khairul lahum bal huwa sharrul lahum سيطبقون باب حلبه يوم القيامة ولله ميراث السماوات والأرض والله بما يعملون بصير. Those who are the misers, they should not think. They should not think that if they are being stingy about what Allah has granted them out of His bounty, that this behavior is going to be good for them. No, it is bad for them. on the day of resurrection it will be hung about and around their necks and unto allah belongs the heritage of the heavens and earth and allah is aware of all what you do so here allah is mentioning that if a person has gold and if a person has silver and if the person has wealth and if the person has currency and despite that he is not giving his zakat he is not paying his zakat on yearly basis or not spending in the way of allah then all that all the riches and the wealth will be will be made in form of bands around their necks on the day of resurrection and This ayah has been more well explained by a hadith which is narrated by Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu in Bukhari. He reports in Bukhari that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that people who had gold and silver and they did not pay their zakat, they did not pay their zakat, then this wealth will take up the shape of a bald snake. who will have two black spots on its eyes and it will not around his neck and it will grip their mouths and it will tear the corners of their mouths and it will cry and it will say ana maluka ana kanzuka i am your wealth i am your wealth and i am the treasure you hold it so the hoarded treasures the held back wealth on which even the rights of allah were not paid this will be their punishment on the day of judgment and the day of resurrection then allah in surah tauba verse number 34 and 35 clearly says walazina yakmizuna zahaba wal fizata wala yunfiquna fi sabilillah fabashshirhum bi azabin alim all those who hoard treasures of gold and silver and do not spend them for the sake of allah give them give them the tiding give them the tiding good news in fact allah is talking sarcastically give them the tiding of grievous suffering fabashshirhum bi azabin alim and what is this azabin alim allah says يَوْمَ يُحْمَى عَلَيْهَا فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ فَتُقْوَى بِهَا تِبَاعُهُمْ وَجُنُوبُهُمْ وَزَهُورُهُمْ هَذَا مَا قَنَسْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ فَذُوقُوا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْنِزُونَ 
What will be the punishment? On the day of the resurrection, the hoarded will be heated in the hellfire and their foreheads and their sides and their backs will be branded with it. Allahumma jirra min an-nar. Astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli zambin wa tubo laik. The bags will be branded with it. And then the trayer will say, it will be sent, these are the trayers you laid for yourself. Taste the evil of your hoarded trayers. So this is what miserliness, stinginess in the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to end up with. There is a there is a very lengthy hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reported by Hazrat Abu Huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala and who in Muslim I will be comprehensively explaining the hadith in my own words the message of the hadith is that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that anyone who possesses gold and silver and does not pay the due zakat then on the day of the judgment the gold and silver will be made into plates and they will be heated in the fire of the hell and with these plates the forehead and the side and the backs of the person who did not pay zakat on them they will be they will be stigmatized and whenever the plates will get cool they will again be put in the fire and then this punishment will be meted out to him for the whole day whose duration will be 50000 years till the cases of all the human beings will be decided and they will find their way either to the paradise or to the hell then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the any person who possessed camels and did not pay the due zakat on the camels then he said the camels will come <coughs> <coughs> he said that the camels will come they'll be they'll be fat fatter they, than what they were in the earth in the life in the world they will be fat and they will healthy they will have healthy bodies and not even a child of the camel will remain behind and they will do what they will trample him with his feet and they will bite him with his teeth and he will yell and when one camel will go back the other will come and this procedure will continue for 50000 years and then he will find his way either to the hell or to the paradise and then if people were given cows and sheep and they do not pay zakat then he will also be laid with his face downwards and the cows and sheep they will come the sheep will be they will have sharp pointed horns and they will poke him with his horns and they will trample him with their hoofs and the process will continue the whole day whose duration will be 50 50,000 years till the cases of all the human beings will be decided and he will find his way either to the paradise or to the hell prabhu ibn li ainda ka paitan fil janna allahumma ajirna min an-nar then hazrat ahnab bin qayf radhiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in muslim that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said warn those warn those who heap wealth warn of what of a scar which will be inflicted on their backs and pierced through their sides astaghfirullah rabbi and then on the nape of their necks and pierced through their foreheads astaghfirullah rabbi astaghfirullah rabbi man kulli zambin wa atubu ilaik astaghfirullah rabbi man kulli zambin wa atubu ilaik Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has reported in a hadith hadith reported by Hazrat Anas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu in Tabrani that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said maniu zakat yawm al-qiyamati fi an-nar the defaulter of zakat will burn in the hell fire on the day of judgment Allahumma la taj'alna minhum oh Allah make us not one of them and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has prophesied hazrat buraida radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in a hasan hadith of tabrani that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said those those people those nations those communities those countries those 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 societies who neglect and do not pay zakat will have to suffer calamities like famine so famine strikes strikes countries and 
societies where people stop paying their zakat then people all the people in all the society becomes a, a society of miserly people and they stop paying zakat then allah stops the rains and drought strikes them and then famine strikes them prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith a true hadith tells us that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that every morning and every evening two angels in the heaven supplicate two angels in the heaven supplicate and they say oh allah multiply the wealth of those who spend in the path of allah and oh allah destroy the wealth of those who do not spend in the path of allah so this is the punishment and this is the curse and this is the supplication of angels on the hell on the in the heaven for the people who are miserly in the rights of allah people generally don't spend generally people don't spend because of the fear that the treasures will be depleted prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said fa wallazi bi yadihi nafsi by the word of allah wealth does not decrease or deplete by spending in the way of allah and then he added respect or honor and status does not decrease by forgiving people rather allah raises the ranks of him who forgives so spending in the path of allah will not deplete our treasures and will not finish or diminish our wealth i would want to narrate or read for you a story from bukhari because to make clear the concept that the angel is going to pray that multiply the wealth and then destroy the wealth of all of those who are not going to spend in the way of allah hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu anhu i'll be reading a story from bukhari hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in bukhari that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam narrated a story of three men of bani israil to his companions he said there were three men in bani israil one was a leper and the other was a bald and third was blind allah intended to test them and so he sent an angel to them and the angel came to the leper and said what do you consider to be the dearest to you he said a fair color a healthy body and a cure that and the cure that which causes the people to hate me the angel touched him with his hand and he was cured his skin became fair and his body became healthy and then the angel asked him which of the wealth do you like the most camels or the cows and the person said camels and the angel gave him a pregnant she camel and he prayed for his prosperity then the angel came to the bald man and he asked him what do you consider to be the dearest to you he said beautiful hair he was deprived of that beautiful hair and the removal of ugliness which caused the people to hate me the angel touched him and he was cured of baldness and then the angel asked him which of the wealth do you like the most he said the cows so the angel gave him a pregnant cow and he prayed for his prosperity also then the angel came to the blind man and he said what do you consider to be the dearest to you he said bless me with the eyesight so that i may be able to see the people in the world around me the angel touched him and the angel gave him eyesight and then he asked him which of the wealth do you like the most he said goats and he was given a pregnant goat and uh, angel prayed for his prosperity also the three animals that is the camel the cow and the goat they got multiplied so rapidly that the three men grew prosperous and then after some period the angel by the order of allah the angel came in disguise in disguise of a poor man and he came first of all to the leper and he asked he narrated his story that i am a poor man i have lost my bag and baggage during the journey and i cannot reach my destination without allah's kindness and your favor and i beg you in the name of allah who has blessed you with a fair skin and lot of wealth 
to give me a camel so that I might reach my destination. He said, there are so many people who come begging to me, but I cannot afford to pay all of them. The angel said, I know you. Were you not a leper and people hated you? You were poor and Allah blessed you with health and wealth. He said, I inherited all the wealth from my ancestors. He just refused the bounties of Allah. Thankless, thankless, miser, stingy, hard-hearted, harsh. He said, I just inherited this wealth from my ancestors. The angel said, you are a liar. May Allah turn you into your former position. And then the angel went back to the bald person and narrated the whole story and asked for his help. He asked for the cow. Then he went and he got the same answers from the blind, from the bald person and said, <coughs> then he went to the blind person and he told the whole story again. He asked for his mercy and he asked for the help and he asked him to give him a goat. And blind men said, indeed, I was blind and Allah blessed me with eyesight. So take from the goats as much as you wish and leave behind as much as you wish. By Allah, today, I will not check your hand from taking that which you wish to take in the name of Allah. The angel said, keep all your wealth with yourself. The fact is that Allah wanted to test the three of you. So Allah is pleased with you and Allah is annoyed with the rest of the two. May Allah make us one of those with whom he is pleased and may Allah stop us from all the evil deeds and all the evil sins which would cause the annoyance of Allah. So this is the concept which Allah is trying to condemn and then Allah says the next verse, the verse number 38, Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يُنْفِكُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ رِيَاءَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Allah says, And also those who spend of their wealth to be seen by people and believe not in Allah nor in the last day. And he to whom shaitan is a companion, then evil is he as a companion. So now in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning an evil deed. The doer of the deed has been said that he will have shaitan as his companion. And Allah is saying that he will have a very evil companion. And Allah is also saying that he who does this deed is like one who does not believe in Allah or in the last day. So anybody who is doing this, anybody who is indulging in this activity, according to Allah, is a non-believer. And according to Allah, will have shaitan, evil shaitan as his companion. So what is the deed which Allah is mentioning about? Riya anasi, Riya, exhibition, showing off, demonstration of either one's wealth, riches or belongings is actually what is called as Riya. Riya is the desire or the effort to be seen, to be known. And it is an evil and a disliked behavior. Hazrat Abu Sayyid Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Ibn Majah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he asked the companions, should I not tell you of an evil deed even more dangerous than the faction of the Dajjal? Should I not tell you of an evil deed which is even more dangerous than the faction of the Dajjal? The companions asked immediately, yes, Prophet Sallallahu do let us know of that evil deed. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, concealed polytheism. Concealed polytheism is even more dangerous than the faction of the Jal. The companions asked, what 
What does that mean? And the Prophet ﷺ informed, Concealed polytheism is what? That a person who stands for Salah just prolongs his Salah, like, like prolonging his prolonging his raku, prolonging his qiyam, prolonging his sajda and prostration, just prolongs his, his salah because somebody is looking at him. So just to impress that person, just to impress his person by the length of his salah and by the beauty of his salah, he prolongs his salah. Then this exhibition and demonstration and showing off of his salah is even more dangerous than the faction of Dajjal. This is the evilness of exhibition and demonstration. Hazrat Shaddad bin As who reports in Musnad Ahmad that Prophet said, whoever paid with intention to show off, paid what? Who spent in the path of Allah who paid any form of charity, whoever spent or whoever made charity with intention to show off committed polytheism and whoever fasted with the intention to show off, he committed polytheism and whoever, whoever offered salah to show off, he committed polytheism. So this is what exhibition and showing off and riya is in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Ma'un, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala announces, فَوَيْلُ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاعُونَ Wail, woe to be those who pray, who offer salah. Woe to be those who pray, who offer salah. Who are they? Those who show off. Little do we realize, little do we realize how evil it is to demonstrate, to exhibit, to show off. I just realize that showing off an exhibition of the worships of Allah come up to that level, come up to that level of polytheism. What would be the grade of, of a person who tries to show off in worldly matters? What would it come up to? What grade and what rank would it be of a person who is trying to show off not his worships but his worldly, worldly matters? Just wearing a dress to show off trying to show off one's dress, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has warned us. In a Sahih Hadith, it is reported that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that a person who just dresses up for being talked off, for a repetition, he dresses up for his good repetition, to be popular for his dress. Then on the day of resurrection, he'll be clad in a dress of dishonor. Oh Allah, save us all. Oh Allah, save us all. Showing off, showing off our dresses, showing off our jewelry, showing off the carrots of our diamonds, showing off and exhibiting our properties, exhibiting Exhibiting our houses, exhibiting our huge cars, the latest model of our cars, of our mobiles, making a shop, making an exhibition, making a demonstration. Do we realize today's, even the parties, the gatherings of today, the marriage ceremonies, the death ceremonies, are all full of exhibition and demonstration of our wealth, of our riches, of our status, how refined we are, how tasteful we are, how polished we are. This is all exhibition. Showing off, it tends to make a person get arrogant. It makes the person proud and makes the person become more materialistic. And it makes the love of the world 
magnify in our hearts and grow in our hearts. Showing off makes the person more, more insincere. It makes the person artificial. It makes the person get egoistic, self-centered, conceited. And, and the person might get even more selfish. And showing off is going to develop the desire to collect more. So these are all the negative feeling and the ill effects in the society of this exhibition, of this demonstration of wealth by the rich, by the, by the people who are the wealthies of the society leads to what? It leads to the development of frustration. It leads to the frustration in the have-nots, in the deprived, in the underprivileged class of the society. So now let's repeat the definition of the behavior of exhibition and rea again. It is what? It is the desire to be seen, to be known, to be talked well of and to be well reputed or to be popular, to be famous regarding anything. So now I would want to finally talk about the punishment. Prophet ﷺ has explained that a person who shows off, how will he be dealt with on the day of judgment? Whose acts, whose deeds were just to get the worldly repetition, to be well known, to be well reputed or to gain worldly worldly benefits out of his good deeds and by showing them off and by boasting them off. Hazrat Abu Huraira anhu reports in Muslim that Prophet said that on the day of the resurrection, first of all, a martyr will be presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will remind him of all the favors and the bounties he had been blessed with and he will admit all and then Allah will ask him what did you do to render your due and he will say that I fought I fought I did jihad and I laid my life that is I was martyred Allah says Prophet said Allah will say no you are a liar you fought just so that you be called brave and people say that you are very brave. So what you wanted, you got that and you were called brave. Now you have no portion hair. That is the hair after. And then the angels will be ordered to drag him to the hell face downwards. Then a person who had a lot of knowledge of the Quran and of religion that he was a religion he was a scholar of the Quran and he will be brought to Allah and Allah will remind him of all the bounties and favors and he will acknowledge what Allah will say and then Allah will say what did you do to render your due he said he will say oh Allah I learned and I taught the knowledge and I recited the Quran for your sake Allah will say, no, you are a liar. You did so because you, you should be known as a scholar. You should be known and renowned as a reciter. So you were called like a scholar and you were known as a kari. Now you have got no portion here. And then this scholar, imagine this scholar used to teach others. Allahumma la taj alna minhum. Then the angels will be ordered to drag him to the hell, their face downwards. And the third man who was blessed with wealth and prosperity and riches and he used to give, he used to give his charity. Allah will remind him of all his bounties and he will ask him, what did you do? He will say that I, I spent, I spent for your sake. I used to spend in charity in the path of Allah. Allah will say, no, you spent because you should be known because of your generosity. People say that you were very generous. So you got what you wanted and they called you generous. So now you know have no portion here and the angels will be ordered to throw him in hell face downwards. Allah, Allah save us from all the evils. 
save us from all the evils of this desire of exhibition and demonstration and showing off and allah bless us with simplicity in our life now coming to the verse 39 allah says wa ma za alayhim law amanu billahi wal yawmil akhiri wa anfiqu mimma razaqahum allah wa qana allah bihi alima and what harm would have come what harm would have come upon them if they believed in allah and the last day and spent out of what allah provided from them and allah is ever about them knowing so from here again in this verse allah subhanahu wa taala is encouraging all of us to spend again like the verse uh, 38 we discussed allah condemned miserliness so here again in this verse number 39 allah is encouraging his bondsmen encouraging the believers and the muslims to spend and to avoid miserliness and spend on one's own self on his family and on his fellow beings and to spend in the path of allah so i would just want to add on with few more hadith to explain how a muslim is expected to spend on himself hasat abul ahwas he was a tabi and he uh, renates to his father hasat malik ibn fazala in musnad ahmad and uh nawai uh, and said that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i went to see him once and i was wearing a very inferior quality clothes and on looking at me the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked do you possess some wealth he said yes the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked what sort of wealth you have and then he said that allah has favored me with all kinds of wealth i have camels i have cows bullocks goats sheep and i have horses and slaves and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when allah has bestowed wealth upon you the effects of his bounty should also be seen on you that is the way you carry yourself the way you live then in another hadith reported by hazrat amr bin shuaib radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu in uh in tirmizi that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it is pleasing to allah that if there is his favor on anyone its effects should be visible on him that if allah gives bounties then the effects of those bounties should be visible on the person allah is pleased by that it is exactly what i really uh, i narrated the ayah wa amma bi ni'mati rabbika fa hadis similarly in another hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it is a hadith Uh, narrated by Hazrat Jabir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu in Musnad and Nisa'i that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he visited me he narrates that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam visited me and he saw a person who was uh, very uncouth and not really refined and his hair were all upset and uh, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam remarked could he not find anything to dress his hair and then he found another person who was wearing very dirty clothes and he said could he not find anything to wash his clothes and then there is another hadith as reported by hazrat asa atwa bin yasar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sitting in the mosque and a person came whose um, hair both of his head and his beard were very untidy and they were bas they were really disarranged and uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said asked him to go and get them trimmed and uh, he said was it not better for you then any one of you come in this hair who are so wild as if he was a devil so it is not disliked for a disbeliever to be untidy to be uncouth to be um, not to be neat not to be clean wearing dirty clothes because you know muslim should look graceful his worldly outfit should be a uh, outfit should be graceful and he should gracefully carry himself and then to relate how to spend and then not to be a miser and then not to overspend we have to maintain a very fine and a very intricate balance also and then to spend and not be arrogant and not be proud and not to show off 
These are all things which are interrelated with the way and when we spend. Hazrat Amr bin Shuaib anhu reports in Mustad Ahmad Nizai in Ibn Majah that Prophet said, It is allowed to eat well, spend on others in charity, have clothes made for yourself, and wear them provided there is no wastefulness and vanity in your hearts. So this is what is teaching us the balance, how to go about it. Then in another uh, saying, which is uh, narrated by Imam Bukhari, as uh, was quoted by Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said that eat what you like and wear what you like, provided it is free from number one, extravagance and arrogance. And in other words are extravagance, arrogance and demonstration so these three things we need to earn lawfully and then we need to spend lawfully within the within the limits on boundaries of allah and when we and when we spend we are not going to be miserly and when we spend we are not going to be extravagant and we are not going to get arrogant and proud and we are not going to show off so this is the total overall balance we need to relate and maintain when we are spending. In another hadith, Hazrat Abu Umama who reports in Abu Dawood that Prophet said, Do you not listen to me? Do you not listen to me? Do you not listen to me? Simplicity, simplicity too is an aspect of faith. So being simple, right? Like spending and being extravagant and wasting your money is also not needed we need to be simple and then simplicity has a beautiful reward which is promised by a hadith which was reported by Hazrat Muaz ibn, ibn, uh, ibn Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Tarimzi that the Prophet sallallahu said that whoever is in a position to wear expensive clothes that is, he has the economic affordability of uh, wearing expensive clothes, but he does what? He refrains from it and uses a simple dress merely out of meekness and humility. Allah will call him to himself before all the creatures on the day of resurrection and will ask him to pick out whatever or whichever robes out of the robes of paradise he would want to. So these are all the words which are actually teaching us an overall balance in the life of a believer. And then we spend, we spend in charity. Then when we spend in charity, we are again not going to do what? We're not going to show off. As Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu la tubtilu sadaqatikum bil manni wal aza qallazi yunfiqu ma lahu riya an nasi wa la yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir O believers do not waste your charitable deeds so there are going to be certain things which are going to waste all the deeds of the charity do not waste your charitable deeds by doing what by speaking of or by boasting of your favored your favor which you conferred or by hurting the feeling of the needy as a person or as one who spends to show off to, to be seen or to be praised and he believes not in Allah and the day of judgment. So spending in the way of Allah, making charity and then either uh, speaking of the favors which have been conferred or hurting people or trying to show off to be, to be very well known then this will waste all the charitable deeds, all the reward of all the charitable deeds. So when, even when we are doing charity, we do not have to show off and we have to try and be very secretive and we try to conceal the charity we spend. There is a hadith reported by Hazrat Abu Hurairah and who in Bukhari that Prophet وسلم, said that on the day of resurrection, the sun will be as close to the people as the distance of a spear or an arrow and the people will be drenched 
or they will be drowning in their sweat according to their deeds because there will be no shade except the shade of the throne of Allah azza wa jal and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam informed that there will be seven lucky people seven lucky people who will be accepted under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number 1 is a just ruler second a person who worshiped even in his youth third a person who who was always attached to the mosque and fourth are the people who love who meet and who separate for the cause of Allah or for the love of Allah and then next is a person whom a young man a young man a person whom a beautiful wealthy young lady invited for adultery or immorality and he refused by saying that i fear allah this was the person who was maintaining his chastity for the fear of allah and the next person who spends charity or who spends in the way of allah in such a secretive manner in such a concealing manner that if he spends with the right hand then the left hand did not doesn't get to know about it and the last person is one who when alone he thinks of his sins when he is alone he thinks and he remembers his sins and he cries for the fear of allah and for the fear of standing before allah azza wa jal allah malik yawm ad-din wa liman khafa maqama rabbihi jannatan rabbibni li indaka baytan fil jannah allahumma ajirna min an-nar allahumma ajirna min an-nar allahumma ajirna min an-nar allahumma ajirna min an-nar اللهم اجرنا من النار